Hello everybody, it is me, Small Goth, back with another DIY video. Today, we're gonna be acid washing stuff. If you don't know what acid washing is, it's the process of bleaching your clothes, usually dark clothes like this, to make designs. Right now I've noticed acid washing has been really, really popular. I've seen it a lot in stores and I've seen a lot of people wearing it just out and about. And I think it's amazing. I've been wanting to acid wash clothes for, I don't know, years. I've been DIYing clothes every now and then for a couple years now, and I really enjoy the turnout. And this is my first acid wash project. I am absolutely in love with it. And today I'm gonna make some more. Not only am I gonna make some more, but I'm gonna walk you guys through each and every step on how I'm doing it, and hopefully you guys can get some inspiration, figure out how to do it yourselves. So I got four things I'm gonna be working on. I have a sweater that is mine. I have another sweater that is also mine. I have a pair of pants, which belong to a friend of ours, and a hoodie that belongs to a friend of ours. These are all black. I prefer black for acid washing because it turns this beautiful, beautiful red color. If you didn't know, uh, when you bleach stuff from black, it goes through all of the colors. It goes from red to orange to yellow to white. And the same thing actually works with hair, surprisingly enough. But if you know how to acid wash properly, you get this beautiful, beautiful red color. Uh, if you're acid washing something lighter, you'll end up with a white color. And if you leave the bleach on for longer and leave it in the sunlight and don't dilute it, it'll actually turn white eventually. The one downside with acid washing though is it does actually thin out your fabrics. So be very, very careful if you are trying to get a light color on a dark fabric that's very, very thin. These I have no problem with because they're a very, very thick fabric, but on something like a t-shirt, the bleach might actually eat all the way through the fabric and start causing holes. Real quick, I also want to show you guys the test outfit that I did for this. That includes this hoodie and a pair of pants. I am absolutely in love with how it turned out. I was really unsure when I first did it, but I am pretty confident in teaching you guys how to do it now. I'll also show you guys a couple of examples of pre-acid wash clothes that I've bought in the past, and some of them I customized, some of them I haven't, but I do really, really love the look just in general. Without further ado, let's get right into it. I'll show you what you need and you can follow along with me. Here we are outside, and the first thing you're going to need is an open area to work in that you don't mind getting chemicals on. And if you don't have that, a piece of cardboard that you don't care about will do just fine. Next up, safety always comes first, so a pair of rubber gloves. Also, a mask is very, very highly recommended. I chose Clorox bleach to work with, but you can choose any kind of bleach. And we have some spray bottles. We have a little pop one and a nozzle one. Uh, we have a little squeezy bottle that I got at an Amazon resale warehouse. I don't know where else you can get these, but... Those are useful. We have a cup to hold some bleach for paintbrushes. And we have various paintbrushes, including a toothbrush. Toothbrush is completely optional. I didn't use it a lot. Coat hanger is also optional if you want to hang your clothes up. And something to hang it on that you don't care if it gets chemicals on, too. And finally, you're going to need your pile of clothes that you want to bleach wash. So here's a quick recap of the things that you absolutely need to work on this. And then there are some optional things. It'll make your life a lot easier if you have a hose that works and an area to rinse it off in, plus something to bring your clothes inside to put in the washer. Lastly, you need some clothes to work in. This should be the last outfit you'd ever want to wear, something that you don't mind getting completely ruined. And let's get into it. As always, safety first. Let's throw our gloves on, have our mask on already. This big spray bottle here is already half filled with water. This is the watered down bleach and I'm filling it about half and half with bleach and water. Next up is the disposal cup. We're just pouring straight bleach in there. We're not diluting it at all. And this little rinky-dink spray bottle, I decided I wasn't going to use. However, if that's all you have available, it'll work perfectly fine. Next is the squeezy bottle. I'm using the disposal cup to kind of funnel it in there. Make sure I don't spill too much on the concrete. Needed a little bit more there. Make sure you seal everything up nice and tight. The last thing you want is unwanted leakage. And then if you have a 50-50 water and bleach mixture in any of your bottles, make sure you give it a good shake. And I am just going right into it. I'm spraying the 50-50 mixture on the first sweater here. The 50-50 mixture will give you a much closer color to the example outfit that I showed you guys, and as you can see at the bottom of the sweater, it's already lifting to a kind of reddish-brown color. 
This technique with a spray bottle from a slight distance will give you a nice fade effect on whatever you actually spray it on. And as you can see, I'm going around all of the holes on the sweater and just trying to get that nice fade effect around everything. Right here, I am flipping it over, making sure I get the back side as well. I am trying to line it up as much as possible. I'm trying to remember exactly how much I sprayed on each part. And in my opinion, I did a pretty good job of keeping it around even. It's not perfect, but the whole point of acid washing is to make sure it's not perfect. Here I'm giving it a few very, very small squirts from a distance. I'm barely pulling the trigger on the spray bottle. And what that does is give a nice little drip effect, kind of like a little splatter. Here I am taking the sleeves and kind of pulling them out halfway, seeing how they line up, making sure everything's okay. And then I am setting it back down on the opposite side, the perpendicular side, I guess, and spraying it, making sure everything around the sleeves and around the bottom of the sweater is coated. And then I'm just making sure I get every single side of it, making sure there's no giant black splotches where I missed fabric. Laying it down, making sure everything looks okay. And then giving it a few last little spurts where I think it needs a touch up. Now, moving on to the next sweater. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do going into this, but I just kind of ran with it. So here I am taking my wide brush and loading it up as much as possible, and I decided to go with an anarchy look for this sweater. My friend whose clothes are in the background asked me to do a bunch of anarchy symbols, pentagrams, satanic imagery on his hoodie, and I figured it would be pretty fun to do a matching one try to keep the theme for the video at the very least, plus it's something that I really, really like the look of. This right here is real time with the undiluted bleach. As you can see, undiluted bleach lifts very, very quickly, and undiluted bleach will actually give you a much, much lighter color. The sweater on the top right that I did the fade effect on actually stayed pretty close to that color, but this one turned out entirely different. I'm speeding things up a little bit here, but I did go over everything at least twice, and I'm taking the little squirt bottle and just spraying big chunks all over everything. Next up, I am taking the undiluted bleach on a paintbrush and trying to get a smaller splatter effect. We are back to real time here, just to explain the whole process to you. I am loading the brush up as much as I possibly can and just flicking it all over the sweater. And here we are, sped up again. I am still just flicking as much bleach onto the sweater as I possibly can here. And then I am going in and just, like you would with normal paint, I am just painting all of the seams, all of the hemlines. I'm not really sure what they're called specifically, but uh... That's what we're going with. We're going with the seams. Uh, I'm a little bit off screen here, unfortunately. I couldn't really see what I was doing with the camera, but I'm doing the exact same thing that I did with the bottom of the sweater. And as you can see, the anarchy symbol is already much lighter than the sweater in the top right. Here I'm flipping it on its side, doing the same thing that I did with the top right sweater. Making sure I get every little bit. Again, acid washing, bleach washing is not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to be very, very imperfect. So I'm not really doing my best to make sure there's 100% full coverage in every single spot on this sweater. I'm just kind of doing my best to get everything to look the same amount of destroyed as everything else. Now we're just flipping it over and we're going to start on the back side of everything. The back side of this, I have really had no idea what I wanted to do until this point, and I'm just kind of laying out in my mind where I want the lettering to go. I ended up going with the phrase, demons walk with us. It was originally going to be demons walk among us, but then I realized the implications of among us. Don't want to have that meme on my back. I think I only went over each line once, but I made sure to dip and fully saturate my brush every time I was going down onto the sweater. 
it is very, very important to keep your brush fully saturated. Bleach soaks into clothing very quickly and it will start working very quickly. So if you're not prepared, it will turn out a little bit funky. But again, this is not meant to look perfect. This is meant to look a little bit funky. So anything you do is perfectly fine. There are no mistakes in acid washing. So here you can see the full back. I really love how the lettering turned out. Usually I'm not great with lettering. Usually I space things out weird. But I actually like how this turned out. I did go in with the squirt bottle here as well, and when I turned it over, I was really, really surprised to see how light it had already gotten. So I moved on to the next step a little earlier than I wanted to. And here we are in the garden. This is not the best place to do this. This is really, really bad for the environment. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking our hose and some cold water from it and I am trying to neutralize the bleach reaction. Bleach is an exothermic reaction, meaning it produces heat. So if you take away the heat, you take away the reaction. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but when I was in beauty school and I learned about lightning hair, that's kind of how I learned it. When you add heat to an exothermic reaction, it makes the reaction speed up. If you take away heat, it slows it down. And then once I have it rinsed off, I am wringing it out very gently and putting it in the bucket for safekeeping. The bucket will catch any excess dye that runs off of it and will keep it from bleaching too much and getting too hot in the sunlight. It'll keep it cool with all the water in it. And overall, it'll make it a lot easier to transport inside when everything goes in the washer. I'm making sure to saturate both sides as much as possible. You can't really tell when bleach is running off the same way that you can dye, but it is very very important to get it fully saturated that's the only way you're gonna be able to get at least most of the bleach off bleach will bubble up actually if you put it in a strong enough water source so like a hose really up close so you will actually be able to tell somewhat how much is running off but again it's impossible to see if you got all of it but better safe than sorry and let's get right back into the bleaching so this clip is very, very sped up as well. This is my friend's hoodie. His directions for me were to go nuts, just make sure I include as many anarchy symbols and as much satanic imagery as I can possibly fit on this thing. So that's exactly what I did. We're starting off with the big brush with the pentagram. Now I realized I got this pentagram completely off to the side and lopsided and all that, but that just adds character to it in my opinion. And then I'm going in with a small brush with 666 on the pockets, just to add to the peel. And it was around this point where I realized just how off-center the pentagram was, and I tried to figure out what I was going to do with it later. And then I'm going in on the seams, just painting it in kind of like I did the last sweater. This hoodie is a combination of all the techniques we already used, plus a couple of new ones, and I will show you those later on. I do use the hanging thing. I'm not really sure what it is, I think it's like a trellis or something, but I do use that to try to lift it up and splatter things a little bit more chaotically. And here I am adding some inverted crosses to fill in the massive blank space that I left on accident. But I think it actually turned out a lot better than I was expecting with just a single pentagram in the center. I, I really like it. And then again we're going in on the big seams on the bottom and on the sleeves, just painting that in again trying to get it to look as messy and chaotic as possible. I realized at some point that I didn't have the camera at a good enough angle for this and I moved it, so apologies for any shakiness right there. And again, make sure you keep your brush fully saturated throughout all this. It is very, very easy to get a much messier outcome than you were expecting. Turning it on its side again, just trying to make sure I get everything. And here I am flipping it to the other side and realizing just how much it lifted without me being ready for it. So to correct this, I started on the most lifted side and then I went to the least lifted side and just went back and forth until I met in the middle. 
to try to get the most even result that I could, even though that doesn't really matter with this sort of technique. But I just still wanted it to look at least somewhat even. Here we are moving out of the sleeves, doing the same thing. Just a much, much smaller and much, much more manageably. This is also a much larger size clothing material thing. I don't know what it's called, but uh, much larger than I'm normally used to working with. I have only worked on my clothes before, so having this much room to work with was really, really freeing, but also kind of intimidating because I had to work a lot faster than I normally do. But overall, I'm, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out, and my friend is really happy with it as well. If you guys think this looks cool so far, just wait until the end when you see it. Another thing about bleach washing, bleach painting, is you don't need a plan to go into this. Literally, just get a piece of clothing that you haven't worn in a while, that you're not really happy with, and make it something you're happy with. It doesn't matter how bad it turns out, because of the fact that it's a DIY project, it's still gonna look cool. On the back, that's exactly what I was doing. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I decided to just go with the whole anarchy theme that was going on with this outfit. And I chose to write, destroy your masters. I just, I took a minute to plot it out. I ran out of bleach for a second. And I just refilled my cup and started going at it. Probably the hardest part about doing something like this is figuring out just how big the letters need to be. I did screw up a little bit on the last couple letters, I made them a little too big, so it's a little bit wonky, but hey, no one except you guys knows that that wasn't intentional. The key to getting the lettering the way that I wanted it was to make sure I didn't have any curved lines whatsoever except on the pentagrams and anarchy symbols that I incorporated into the lettering. And to always make sure you go over everything at least twice, once really heavy, once a little bit lighter. That'll make everything look a little bit raggedy, a little bit destroyed, a little more chaotic. And it really, really adds to the touch with this kind of material and style of clothing. And let's all take a minute to appreciate the fact that I chose to wear Christmas socks in the middle of summer. I don't know what I was thinking, but... For some reason, Christmas socks are always the most comfortable, and it really doesn't matter if you get bleach on them, because how often are you going to wear Christmas socks, and how often are people going to be able to see them? Wear whatever's comfy, dudes. Anyway, here we are going in on the seams of the hood itself. I'm just taking my time here, making sure everything gets fully saturated and gets saturated evenly. The gloves came in really, really handy here, and if you're anything like me, you always have some sort of open cut on your hand, whether it's a paper cut, or from biting your nails, or from whatever it is you're doing. These gloves are one of the most important parts of safety when it comes to doing projects like this with any sort of harsh chemical. Bleach especially stings if you get in an open wound, so I 100% guarantee that you will need gloves for any sort of project like this. Even if you're not planning on hand painting anything, you never know when spells are going to happen. So it's very, very useful to have them, at least on the side, just in case you need them. And here we're going to take it over to the trellis garden rack thing, and we're going to try to get some cool splatter designs on it. The number one reason that I decided to do this standing up instead of on the ground is because I wanted things to be a little less consistent than the other sweaters that I was working on. I wanted things to look really random and chaotic, and I wanted everything to just kind of go over the folds and not connect with itself. And I didn't get exactly the result that I wanted with this, but I do think it still turned out pretty cool. I made sure to get some on the front, on the back, on the hood, I tried to coat every single inch of it with some sort of splatter, and I think it turned out pretty good in the end. So here I'm just going in with the spray bottle at a distance. This will give some little tiny red flecks instead of the like muted brownish white color. And then I'm going back in with the little squirt bottle. What I was trying to do here is try to get a like drip effect. It didn't really work out the way I wanted it to, but it still turned out pretty cool. And then again, just going in with the little red flecks from the 50-50 mixture. 
taking a look at it and then trying to get some more on the back because I realized I didn't get as many splatters back there as I wanted to. Again, with the 50-50 mixture, I'm just putting barely any pressure on the trigger for the spray bottle. Just trying to get it as loose and as like chunky of droplets as I can. With the squirt bottle, I'm also putting a little bit of pressure as I'm flicking it at the hoodie. This is just making sure that all the air gets out and that it squirts out in the most viscous way possible. If you've never worked with bleach before, you won't really know what the consistency is like. It's almost close to the consistency of uh, like a yogurt or a pudding. It's really weird when you first start working with it. And then I am just angling the camera back down because I'm going to throw the hoodie back on the ground again. It doesn't really matter how dirty you get these things because they're going in the washer as soon as you're done anyway. So don't worry about getting things dirty or messy. I'm just trying to lay out things so all the seams are visible. These are the sections that I didn't really get to well with the standing up method of splattering. And I'm just going in with the paintbrush fully saturated again. It's kind of hard to see what's going on here because I'm not really in frame, but I'm still just doing the same thing that I was doing before. And as time goes on, you can see exactly where the splatters hit, exactly where everything is lifting. And you can really tell that it's all coming together at this point, really. And I'm picking up and doing the same thing to the back. The back didn't get as much saturation of the splatters as I wanted to, especially the left sleeve there. That didn't get anything on the back. So I'm just going in, correcting that, making it a little closer to the vision I had in mind. And that is it. I am going over and hanging it up to dry off camera, and we'll get into the pants. The pants I was the most unsure about out of everything here, but I decided that I was going to put some splatters on some parts of it and not on others, so I'm using some disposable single-use plastic bags to cover up the areas that I wanted to leave black. I'm using single-use bags rather than reusable ones just because this is a harsh chemical and I don't want to keep it around in the house. I would rather have the ability to just get rid of it, dispose of it properly, instead of uh, having some weird bags that might just have some chemical residue on them. So at first I was going with the big spray bottle, and as you can see the 50-50 mixture just wasn't really doing anything. You can see it hitting the pavement, but where it's hitting the pants it's not even lifting at all. This is because uh, black dyes are either red based or blue based or green based. This was a blue based dye and it was on denim. And denim, if you didn't know, is very, very difficult to bleach dye out of. Up top, where I was using the paintbrush, you can see some flecks coming through. This fabric bleached very, very quickly when I was using the undiluted bleach. So that's what I started to use from this point on. It was a long process. It was a lot more tedious than I wanted it to be. But I ended up really liking the results. Here I was trying to go with the toothbrush. I thought it was going to work a little bit better than this, but the bleach unfortunately was just too viscous to get a good splatter going on with it. If you use the same technique with a toothbrush with paints, it'll actually give you a really, really nice random splatter effect. It kind of looks like stars. It's really, really cool. But the drops of bleach were just too small to really show up on the pants. So I am going in with the squeeze bottle and just kind of squishing it and dripping it down in an up and down motion, trying to get as many little splotches as I can. I also did some flicks with the brush and with the squeeze bottle, but it didn't really give me the results I was looking for. The tails of the squeeze bottle flicks didn't really show up the same way they did on the hoodie, which was really unfortunate. But once I was satisfied, I started taking the bags off, checking how I liked it, and putting them somewhere safe where they wouldn't blow away. At this point, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, so I just went in with a paintbrush and started penciling in some stuff. On 
the left knee here, I wrote the word fuck because I figured my friend would really enjoy that, which he did. He calls these pants his fuck pants. I think it's the funniest thing. But I did have to go over every single stroke at least twice for it to show up properly. Anywhere where there's overlap in between brush strokes would lift a lot faster than anything else. So in order to make things look at least somewhat even, I had to go in two, maybe three times on each stroke. Up top on the right, I am putting some anarchy symbols. Unfortunately, I blocked the camera with my hand, but you'll be able to see those in a minute. I am right-handed and doing things at any other angle other than 45 degrees is very, very difficult for me. So even at this angle, I was very uncomfortable trying to get this done. And that's why I came back over to this side and I painted in a pentagram and some 666. And as you can see on the pentagram, the corners of the star where it meets the circle are lightening a lot faster than anything else. Here I decided to go back over the anarchy symbol because they weren't as light as the rest of it. And I did some inverted crosses and as you can see on the first cross, the intersection of the two lines is very very light and the rest of it is very very dark. And originally I left the lower right side because I thought it was going to bleach a little bit more, but the denim absorbed this bleach really, really fast. And by the time I realized that, it was uh, a little weird going back to it. But this is where I realized every time I go over something, I have to go over it two or three times in a row or else it's not going to bleach the way I wanted it to. Now we're moving on to the back of the pants. And the back of the pants, I actually did the opposite way. I put in the designs that I wanted first instead of the splatters. When I first started the pants, I didn't know what designs I wanted to do, what sort of lettering I wanted to do. So I just kind of waited till the last second. But over here, I kind of had an idea. Again, my friend wanted a lot of satanic imagery. He's trying out different subcultures and styles. So he wanted an outfit similar to what I would wear. And again, he just told me to go nuts. So I put a Hail Satan and another pentagram. And I just tried to make these as edgy and out there as possible. You can really see on this lettering how fast it lightened on the intersections of words rather than everything else. And this is where I really got into the groove of gauging how much bleach I needed for each line. This was my first time bleaching denim, and I didn't think it was going to be this difficult. At the end of the day though, it turned out a lot better than I was expecting it to. I expected things to look really messy and patchy, and in a way they did, but in another way that's how I wanted it to turn out. So on the back of the right knee, I am going in and writing disobey. This time I wrote everything out first and then I went back over it afterwards. And this was the method that I ended up sticking with through the rest of the pants. Following that up with an anarchy symbol on the left pocket. I didn't really know what else I wanted to do on the pocket, so I just kind of left the other one. And then obviously you gotta go in with the inverted crosses. These ones, in my opinion, turned out a lot better than the ones on the front, just because I had a better idea of what I was doing. And then a 666 on the other knee, again, I went in, did all of the lettering first just so I could barely see it, and then went back in and made it a lot more visible. And this is where I went in with the plastic bags again, I'm reusing the same bags, I didn't want to use too many. But we are just going back in with that and covering up the areas with designs on it. I folded it up quite a bit to get it to cover the anarchy pocket and then just put something on top of it. And re-angling the camera to get a better view of things. This time I just went in and started off with the squeezy bottle because that's what gave me the best results on the front of the pants. Again, I'm not really sure how to get these squeezy bottles. I just got it at an Amazon resale warehouse. It wasn't even labeled or anything. It just came in a pack of like five of them. But I'm sure if you just looked up squeeze bottles on Amazon or if you went into your local grocery store, you could find something similar. Yeah. 
I did try to go through and make sure the splatters were at least somewhat symmetrical. I didn't want them so close together that they looked unnatural, but I did want to make sure everything had around the same density of spots. Then I just went in with the bags, took them off, and called this a finished product. For the rinsing process, I did the exact same thing as earlier and just sprayed them down with cold water, made sure they were fully saturated, and then took them inside to be washed. This is the exact same process that we did earlier with the two sweaters, so I'm just gonna speed on past this and get to the next step of things. And at this point, we are almost done with everything. The last thing left to do is to wash everything and to clean things up. So here I am just putting everything into the washer. There is a lot of grass on here, which is not a big deal. They'll still wash right. You just have to clean up a little bit more later. And as you can see, they are pretty wet. I ended up dripping things onto the machines. I had to clean that up later. And you can just see how much water is just running off of this because I didn't wring it out all the way. At the bottom of the bucket, you can also see just how much dirt and grime and dye came off of everything. But we're just filling up the washer. I do usually just leave the cup in there to clean it off. We are setting the load size. We are making sure we are on cold water. We are keeping two rinses on just to make sure we get all of the chemicals off. And we are setting it to a normal cycle and putting it on the longest setting. While the washer is running, I'm making sure to rinse off the brushes in cold water. I'm not using any soap just because I'm setting these brushes aside to be only used for bleach projects in the future. Back to the washer, we are going to pull everything out and get it set up in the dryer. As you can see, there is a lot of grass that's come off of there. We're going to clean that up in just a minute, but first we're going to put everything in the dryer. The lint trap will actually catch a lot of the grass that you don't get off of the clothing, so you don't have to worry too much about that as long as you make sure you clean your lint trap later on. I didn't show myself cleaning it, but there was a lot of grass in there and it really needed to be cleaned out as soon as I finished this. Throwing a dryer sheet in there just to keep the static off, and we are setting it to its full 60 minute cycle. Hit start and we wait. In the meantime, this is how much grass was left in the washer. It was a real pain to clean up, but I did clean it out with just water and a paper towel. And then an hour later, the clothes were dry and ready to be worn. And this is my friend's finished outfit. I think it turned out really badass, and he agrees with me. It turned out a lot better than I was expecting it to, a lot better than I hoped it to. And it's really, really awesome. He loves it. I love it. The pants ended up bleaching just a little bit more than the hoodie did, but the imperfect nature of this sort of outfit is what makes it so special and unique. Every single time you do something like this, it's going to turn out different no matter what you do. And I think that's really the best part about this DIY clothing thing. He ended up loving the, uh, the fuck on the knee just as much as I thought he would. And I ended up loving my outfits just as much as he did. Later that same day, we ended up going to Walmart in these outfits. We got a lot of weird looks, but I think they turned out really cool. Here is a close-up of the back of mine. They turned out a little bit lighter than I thought I would, but that's perfectly fine by me. I am going to have to wait a little while before I can wear these comfortably, because I was really weirdly warm in these, because it's the middle of summer. But I think these are worth waiting for. He left! He doesn't love me anymore. Anyway guys, I hope you guys learned something from this. Here we have our roommate, T. Hi y'all the one doing? that commissioned me for the other outfit that I was working on in this video. If you guys have any questions about how to acid wash things, what you should do, uh, you can leave them in the comments below. Thank y'all very much for your patience, and I do appreciate it. Make sure y'all come back for more tips and tricks on acid washing and bleaching things, okay? Probably won't do another acid wash video, but... It's okay, but I ask questions. she's open to commissions as well. <laughs> you hear me? You hear me? She's open. <laughs> Do you hear me? She's open to commissions as well. Anyway, I will link my commission information in the description below as well. And if you guys want to support me, I have an Instagram, Twitter, DeviantArt, and I have a Redbubble where you can buy merchandise and a Ko-Fi. So if you want to donate anything, every dollar helps. You don't get the hat. Anyways, subscribe! 
subscribe and follow for more content. She pushes it out like it's a baby. I agree. I don't push it out like it's a baby. I took like a five month hiatus, but thank you. As always, guys, if you like the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more content. I do a lot more art videos, and I have a lot of DIY videos planned for the future. As always, stay safe, stay scary, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Good morning. How are you doing today? I appreciate your existence. Keep up the good work.